So this is day seven of Puppy Watch. And as you can see, Mum is out. She's quite tired this morning as normal. Um, she's at a whole bowl of breakfast and I've done her a second bowl. She's at half of that and she's also had a go at Dad's. So her appetite is much better. And also she's toileting much better. The very, very scary diarrhea that she had has cleared up and we're not back to normal, but we are definitely getting there. And you'd have just seen the puppies. And I managed not to talk over that because it was just too cute and it didn't need it. This is just amazing. This is just an amazing experience. So Mum's back in the nest now. Um, she's been out for a good half an hour. She's even played with Dad, which is a first since the puppies arrived, so that's good. Um, I've noticed one of the puppies has got a tiny cut on its foot. So I've brought some honey with me to put on the cut because it's really good antibacterial. Um, the higher the sugar rating, the better. Manuka's the best, but if you haven't got Manuka, any honey will do because the high sugar, like I say, the high sugar content is antibacterial, so it uh, really works. And it's a nice natural thing to use on a little puppy. So uh, as you can see, they're in. Now Mum's just got back in. They're straight in to to uh, to look for a feed. And these are not. These are not. Uh, see, Dad made a move towards us then. So she's still very nervous if he starts coming towards us, particularly as the doors are open, so she feels a bit exposed. Um, so he's backed off, he's having a drink. He, he knows what, his, uh, what he is and isn't allowed to do now. He's picking up his ball and he's throwing it at me, so he's going to gradually get a little bit closer. So she'll be telling him off again in a second. And rightly so. If you've got a nursing bitch and she's telling... Uh, other dogs in the household off. Don't tell her off, tell them off. She's doing the right thing. She is making sure that her babies survive the best way she knows how. Um, so, you know, she's absolutely doing the right thing and shouldn't be told off for it. As she heard yesterday, he was the one I told off and told her away. Because we don't want mum stressed. Mum is doing really well. And we, we really don't want to see anything happen now to um, to ruin that. So we still haven't managed to get a good look at the puppies for the sexing, which we're going to hope to do that later. We had a, a great time yesterday, came in to do the welfare visit. Mum met me at the gate, absolutely hysterical. Um, and I couldn't work out why. Normally she would say hello and then run back to the puppies and wait for me. But uh, she didn't, she was jumping up at me, she was whining at me, so I knew something was wrong. The minute I stuck my head through the doors, three puppies. Three puppies, three puppies, oh, three puppies. Where's puppy number four? Because obviously we haven't named them yet, because we don't want to be giving names without knowing what sex they are. So we turned the bed out, turned the towel, there was a lump in the towel, I thought the baby had crawled under the towel that we're using as liners. No, the lump was just another bit of the duvet. And what baby had managed to do is crawl out of the nest through the silliest gap and was wedged between what we're using to make the edges of the nest and the, the shed door. Um, and because they're such little fat babies now, he was wedged, or she was wedged, and asleep. So while mum is completely stressing because she can't get the angle to, to lift the puppy up to, to get it out of the little gap, the puppy is completely unconcerned, sound asleep, quite happy. So back it went, in with mum, and that was, that was her happy then. So just see if we can get a better angle on these babies, look. Oh, she's they eat and poop so she cleans them all the time while they're eating but I do need to get a look at this this little puppy's foot and get some get some honey on it before I go today so daddy's just laid down it's going to be a warm day today 
So I'm going to make sure there's plenty of water and I'm going to try and leave this as open as I can because I don't want them to overheat. So we started off with our concerns that were they going to be warm enough. Now today we're going to be worried are they going to be too warm. Oh it's stressful this mummy business, isn't it? Isn't it my beautiful girl? It's stressful this mummy business. But like I said, this is just such an amazing experience. So anybody that's kind of just interested in the dogs and wants to turn the sound down now, please feel free because my soapbox is coming out again. And this one, <laughs> if you thought I was getting a bit passionate before, this one is the one that really gets me. So introduction of the Dangerous Dog Act. Absolutely, we need something in place. Um, the bite problems are increasing. In the USA, they have a project called Stop the 77. That's because 77% of dog bites take place in the home. That's family members with their dog. Um, and there's also been a campaign started called Put the Camera Down because people are living their lives through the camera. Their children with their dogs, filming it not supervising it, not living in it, not enjoying it, filming it. And I know that seems a bit of a joke at the moment because that's exactly what I'm doing. But the Dangerous Dog Act was introduced to protect people. And one of those sections is section one, is breed-specific legislation. And that is what needs changing because it's aimed at a breed of dog. You know, you can't do that. You cannot say a breed of dog is dangerous. A breed of dog is just what it is. It's bred for what it was bred for. It does the job that it does. They're not bred. There isn't a dog bred to be aggressive. It's the way they're raised. And we're back again to responsible ownership. You know, one of the, the problems I had, and it's why I've learned so much in such a short space of time, was we adopted our Staffy Cross from Battersea. And people's attitude to her was just awful. She's this beautiful dog who loves other dogs, like desperate, desperate to socialise. And people cross the road. A woman said to me, oh, you know, she was talking to me, we we're holding a conversation across the road. And I said, oh, this is silly, let me cross over to talk to you. She had a Weimar armour. And she said, oh, don't do that. And I said, why, is there a car coming? And she said, no, I don't like those sort of dogs. And I said, oh, well, that's really interesting because... You know, that you know what breed of dog she is, what sort of dog she is, because Battersea didn't. Battersea couldn't tell me what sort of dog she was. It's only as she grew up from the puppy that we that we adopted that we realised that she's part of staff, but we can't tell you what else she has in her. And I want you to look at this, because it's not so long ago in the media that German Shepherds were all over the front page as the dangerous dog. And Rottweilers were all over the front pages as a dangerous dog. And then we came to pit bulls, or as it is in breed specific legislation, type. That's a very scary word, type. A pit bull type. A tape measure decides whether your dog has the right to live or die. So if the police sees your dog as type, they then decide through measurements whether it is, uh, it is a dangerous dog, whether it is a pit bull type. Wrong, wrong, wrong. You know, it's done nothing, nothing to reduce bite statistics. Absolutely nothing. What it's done is it's put thousands and thousands of staffies and crossbred staffies into rescue. It's put thousands and thousands, and it's scary the number of dogs that have been destroyed because they can't be rehomed because the rescues are filling up, because there's not the money to pay to look after these dogs or take care of them when they have health problems. It's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. There's just... I, I can't explain it. I can't really even sometimes find the words, and I think that's because, for me, it's quite an emotional thing as well, is that dogs are what we put into them. So you take the breed, so there are aspects of the breed that will decide how your dog acts in certain situations um, because there's jobs that they've been bred for, but it's about what we put into them. You know, we just, we are responsible for the adults that are produced. 
you, there's no such thing as a bad dog. It is what we do to them. And even dogs that have been used as bait dogs, who are then saved and rescued, still show the most amazing love towards the, the people that care for them, that foster them, that rescue them, that adopt them. Because they have such a huge capacity for love and trust and faith in us as humans. It is our job. It is our job to protect them. It is our job to be responsible for them. And it is our job to make them productive, happy members of the community. And that's my message. See, this is my message. This is not a dangerous dog. And yet it's not that long ago she would have been considered just because she's German Shepherd. And yet you've seen her over the last seven days with the, with the puppies. And the only time she's shown any kind of warning is if Dad has come too close. And she's not hurt him. She's just said to him, wait, mate, no, these are my babies, I'm keeping them safe, go away. And so it's just wrong, you know, it's just wrong. And I'm seeing dogs now um, because I'm linked with DDA Watch, Dangerous Dog at Watch and a lot of um, anti-BSL groups. I went on the London protest um, to, to protest against it to, because it's just not working. Listen to us. Listen to us. It's not working. There are other options. Look at the Calgary model. The Calgary model is amazing. Introducing responsible ownership. That is the way forward. Um, another one is education, not euthanisation. Educate people, teach children the right way to interact with a dog and the right way to behave around a strange dog. You know, they, they did um, a piece on, on one of the Dogs Their Secret Lives programmes where they showed pictures of uh, dogs to children showing their teeth and asked what they thought. Would they stroke that dog? And on a snarling, on a snarling picture, because the dog was showing the teeth, they thought it was smiling and they would stroke the dog. No, that's not what we want to be teaching children. We want to be teaching children to be responsible and respectful around our dogs, around our pets. And of course, we also need to be teaching our pets to be respectful around our children and our family. You know, there are things that they do that they don't mean to hurt. You know, you've got a, a small dog as it starts out like these are. Look how tiny these puppies are. And yet they will become big dogs. So they need to learn early on things like not jumping up. Um, you know, just good manners around the home. We just need to make sure that what we're doing is the right thing at both ends of the lead. Now, Mama's quite had enough of me. She's listened to me rant and rave several mornings on the trot now. So that's me finished for now. There's lots of information out there on breed-specific legislation. Um, please go and look at it. Please sign the petitions there are that are trying to, to get it discussed in government to get it reviewed because it, it's not working. It really isn't. We need to find something that works because we need to start saving the dogs that are suffering and being put down through no fault other than the way they look. And we need to be protecting families and children in the right way and protecting our dogs in the right way. And the right way, isn't it, Mum, is being responsible and taking care, just like Mum's doing with her babies. Say night-night. <laughs>